Hey, I've got a problem, and, and I hope you can help me with it. The problem is this. My son's overseas studying, and he's come to me and said he wants to rent a motor scooter. Now, that sounds kind of neat. He could get to class on the motor scooter, and he could get around town on the motor scooter, but we don't really understand what it's going to cost us, and maybe you can help us. You see, the price that was quoted to him was $24.95 a month, plus 15 cents per mile. And we don't really understand what that means. I wonder if you can help us solve this. Well, this scooter my son wants to rent is twenty-four ninety-five per month plus fifteen cents per mile. And in order to understand this and figure out what the cost might be for different mileages, I think we need to create an equation. I think we need to translate this English into algebra, and that's pretty easy to do. We're going to try to figure out what the total cost is, and the total cost equals twenty-four ninety-five per month plus fifteen cents per mile. And I can create an equation that says that. I can say total cost equals $24.95 plus 15 cents times the number of miles driven. But this is algebra, and we don't like using big words like miles driven and monthly cost. It's going to be easier to see this and understand this if we just replace those with variables. So let's do that. Monthly cost, or y, equals $24.95 plus 15 cents times x which means miles driven. Well, we've made some progress. We have now a formula, an algebraic notation, that tells us what the cost would be. Y, the monthly cost, equals $24.95 plus 15 cents per mile. But I think I can understand it better if I put that information in a chart. And I created, for various mileage, I could calculate what the total monthly charge would be. So for instance, for zero miles, I'd replace x with zero, and the cost would be 15 times zero plus 24.95, or 24.95. And I've done that with the rest of the mileages down there, and that's what the monthly cost would be for these various mileages. Well, that's helpful. I can look at that and get a feel for how much it's going to cost. But it might be better if I could put this in a, in a graph. And I've done, I'm going to do that over here on the right. I put the miles driven along the x-axis, and we're calling x the miles driven, so that makes sense. And the y-axis is the total monthly cost. And I could plot these corresponding points on this graph. Let's do that. Zero and 24.95. Well, there's 0 on the x value and there's 24.95 on the y. And 50 and 32.45. If I drive 50 miles, it's going to cost me 32.45 per month. If I drive 100 miles, 100 miles, it's going to cost me just less than $40 per month. And I can plot the rest of that points. And it sure looks like a line to me. It sure looks like I could draw a straight line right through all those points. And I've done that. And you know what's amazing? I could go anywhere on this line, on this straight line, and figure out what the cost would be for various mileages. For instance, if I drove 475 miles, I'd come up to the line, and then I'd go over to the total cost, and I could see that that would be less than $95. So that line's pretty helpful. It helps us understand the cost a lot better. And you know what's amazing? That line, 
represents the equation that we wrote up there. This equation and this line tell us exactly the same thing. Well, that is amazing. But doesn't it mean that if I know what this line is and I know what this equation is, these numbers have to correlate with the line in some way. There has to be some relationship. I mean, I've got a y-axis right here, and I've got x-values right here, but there's two things, 24.95 and 15 cents, that I don't have. I wonder where I could get those. Well, I'm going to show you. The first is 24.95. And 24.95 is where the line crosses the y value. It's where x is 0. That's where we start. x is 0 and we start right there at 2495 and we call that the y intercept. And in this case it's 2495. So we know where that comes from. That's where the line crosses the y axis. Where's this come from? 0.15. Well, I'm going to tell you. It's the slope of the line. And you remember how we calculated slope we'd get the rise divided by the run. We'd find out how much it went up the y-axis by how much it ran across the x-axis. And in this case, the rise was 15, the run was 100, and 15 divided by 100 is 0 0.15, 0 0.15. So our formula is y equals the y-intercept plus the slope times x y equals the y-intercept plus the slope times x. Or we could rewrite that, and it's normally written this way. y equals the slope times x plus the y-intercept. Well, that was pretty neat. We had an equation, and we graphed it. We created a line out of that equation. Well, could we go the other direction if we had a line on a graph? Could we cr create the equation that it represents? Well, if it's a straight line, like that, which means that there's a constant rate of change, then we could create an equation that represented that graph. And the format of that equation would be the format that we used previously, y equals the slope of the line times x plus the y-intercept. So all we got to do is figure out the slope and the y-intercept and then we can create an equation. Well, the y-intercept's easy. It's where the line crosses the y-axis. And in this case, it crosses it at minus 50. So our y-intercept is minus 50. And slope's not hard either. We just get rise over run. We just figure out how much rise there is, how much change in the y-axis there is for an amount of change in the x-axis. And in this case, our, it, it rises 40 and runs 20. So our slope is 40 over 20 or 2. Now we can just put that in the equation and we get y equals the slope 2 times x plus the y-intercept. And the y-intercept's a negative number, so plus a negative number is minus 50. Well, here's another way you can figure out the slope. Because you need the slope and the y-intercept to create an equation for that line. And you remember that the slope is the rise over the run. Well, the rise, that's just how much you're moving along the y-axis. When we move from here to here, I could count 10, 20, 30, 40, and come up with a rise of 40. But our coordinates tell us where we are on the y-axis. That second coordinate shows us where that point is on the y-axis. We start at 10, we end up at 50. And the difference between 50 and 10 is 10, 20, 30, 40. So we can calculate our rise by using the y values in our coordinate pairs and just finding the difference between them. It's y2 minus y1, or delta y. 
And delta just means change in. We can do the same thing for the x uh, for the run. Run is just moving along the x-axis. And the first number in our coordinate pairs shows us where we are on the x-axis. So the difference between the x values in our coordinates is going to be how much we ran. In this case, we ran from 50 to 30, or a run of 20. And now we can calculate what the slope is. It's the change in the y coordinate divided by the change in the x coordinate. We'll come to think of it, I don't even need a line to figure out the equation if I've got two points from that line. If I have the coordinates of two points on the line, I can probably figure out what the equation for that line is. For instance, if I knew that point 0.612 and point 0.08 were on the line, I could figure out what the equation is. Because all I need to do is figure out what the slope is and what the y-intercept is. And we know how to figure out the slope from just the, pa the coordinate pairs. It's the difference in the y values divided by the difference in the x values. And in this case, it's 12 minus 8 divided by 6 minus 0, which is equal to 4 over 6, or 0.667. So we know what the slope is. Now can we figure out the y-intercept? Well, think about it. The y-intercept is where the line crosses the y-axis. What's the value of x where the line crosses the y-axis? Uh, y it's 0. The line crosses the y-axis at a point right in the middle where x equals 0. So if I know a coordinate pair where x is 0, then the value of y in that coordinate pair is going to be the y-intercept. And in this case, that's 8. So I know what my slope is, and I know what my y-intercept is, and I can figure out my equation. Find the equation that describes the straight line that goes through these two points, 12, 16, and 0, 12. Well, the formula is y equals m, or the slope, times x, plus the y-intercept. And to, to solve this, we need to calculate what m, the slope, is, and we need to calculate what the y-intercept is. Well, you remember that the slope is the change in the y values divided by the change in the x values. It's the amount it rises along the y-axis divided by the amount it runs along the x-axis. So I'll take my first y value, 16, and I'll subtract my second y value, 12, and I'll divide that by my first x value, 12, minus my second x value, which is 0. 16 minus 12 is 4. 12 minus 0 is 12. So my slope is 4 divided by 12, or 0.333. Now what's my y-intercept? Well, the y-intercept is where x is 0. And they tell us that one of the points is 0, 12. So my y-intercept is 12. And if I know that, then I know that my formula is y equals the slope 0.333 times x plus 12. That's our lesson on writing equations in slope-intercept form. In order to really get, get a good understanding of this, though, you need to go to www.mastermath.info and download the writing equations in slope-intercept form. After you've done that worksheet, then go back to Master Math and try the quiz on writing equations in slope-intercept form. I hope you enjoyed yourself, and I hope to see you again real soon.